and I'm so honored to have you today. So we want to talk about this, guys, because I think it's very important. And as church, we need to talk about this thing. What is it that the Bible teaches us, you know? Yes. Because I know Hollywood is, you know, teaching us or telling us yeah. different stuff, right? That is out of content. So tonight, for me and my husband, it's a great honor. It's an honor and a pleasure, yes. So we want to invite Gary and Josh. Yes! social media by the way Instagram, TikTok Snapchat everything you know um, social media is telling us how to do relationship you know social media is telling us uh, to follow our feelings social media is telling us um, you know to, to do what is right to you you know uh, to do different kinds of things but you know why this topic is so important is because we want to um, declare what God says about relationship. We want to speak of what God says about relationship. And uh, yeah, we just, again, find it a huge honor, you know, to be called up here to kind of share our experience. And, uh, and yeah, by the way, how many here are single? Let me see. Everyone, single people look around. How many here are single and ready to mingle? No, okay, no, no, it's okay. Good answer, good answer. Um, how many here are in a relationship? In a dating relationship? How many here are talking to someone? 
you know, trying to conquistar, you know. How many here are married? We have a different crowd here. <laughs> we have a different crowd here, so we hope that, I mean, yeah, that this message, you know, speaks to all of you guys. Um, yeah. So, so. Yeah, one thing to that before, we're going to pray before we, before we get started, but one thing that is very common, especially growing up in church, like Anita said, there's certain things that aren't talked about uh, in full detail, you know, and a lot of times we just hear the the rules, you know, or the boundaries, like, don't be dating, you're too young, don't be kissing someone, like, um, don't be alone with a boy, don't be alone with a girl. We hear a lot of these things from our parents because they want to protect us, they want to guard our hearts, they want to guard, guard God's plan for our lives. However, we don't want to always understand why. You know, I mean, I definitely grew up hearing a lot of that, and I'm really thankful for it because it saved me from a lot and protected me from a lot. Um, However, I'm even more grateful now, truly understanding why it's so important and why they say don't do this, don't do that. It's truly because what God designed for us is so intentional and it's so special. And we don't want anything to distract us or hinder us from receiving what God wants us to experience, if that makes sense. Um, it's not so much about don't do this, don't do that. It's like, hey, there's something that God intentionally designed for us and it's available for us at the right time and that's what we want to pursue and so we don't want to waste time or energy um, on something that is not that and especially as Josh and I have been dating we've truly been learning so much about the value of marriage it says in um, Ephesians 5 25 plus six love your wives as Christ loved the church I don't know if you've ever heard that Bible verse before I definitely have heard it many times and it to be honest, kind of not checked out, but I was like, oh, so cool. Like, that's what a husband's supposed to do, but it doesn't apply to me now because I don't have a husband. However, it's actually so important because here it says, husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church. Here it's telling us that even just by entering into a marriage, we're agreeing to be a picture of Christ, the love of Jesus for us. Like, think about that. Before we even marry, that's something that's so valuable. Because the love of Jesus, the way that he showed his love for us, was by going to the cross and dying for us, and then resurrecting, um, and bringing us back to life with him. And that's a picture, just marriage is a picture of that. And so it's so important, it's so valuable, and so we're just really excited to talk to you guys about that today. Um, but we're going to pray first, um, and truly our hope is that we walk out of here um, just more in love with Jesus, more in love with his design, more in love with his creation, and truly just an honor and reverence of who God is, and with a desire of wanting to live um, a life before him. So. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks. Father, first of all, because you are here in this room. Thank you, Father, because um, your presence is here with us. Father, we believe that you want to speak. Father, we, we believe that you want to uh, change mindsets tonight, Father. You want to change uh, truths, Father. Uh, Father, we believe that you are the way, the truth, and the life, Father. So we just open up our hearts. Father, we open up our minds. Jesus, uh, speak to us, Father. Show us new things. Father, reveal to us new things, my God. Uh, but most importantly, Father, just uh, demonstrate your word, Father, tonight, Lord. Father, so we just give you thanks, Lord. Uh, we love you, we honor you, we worship you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You guys ready? Yeah. So just, uh, should we share how we met? Yeah. Before we get started, yeah. we're going to share a little bit of our story, who we are, how we met. Yeah. So, um, so I've, uh, I've moved here in, like, in this area. Um, in 2020, um, just long story short, uh, we used to live in Temecula. Uh, we moved here with my family, um, and we started going to uh, Restoration Life. Um, That's the church that we go to. Yes, and um, yeah, uh, when I mean, when when I first uh, moved into the church, I mean, I didn't know Karen uh, per se. Like, it's it's 
it wasn't like love at first sight, you know. Um, but we met each other through ministry. We met each other through, um, you know, through the uh, uh, doing young adults, um, you know, just being in church. Um, and, you know, I would kind of see who she is. You know, I was, I was interested. And, um, but from afar, I would kind of see the person that she is. You know, I would be her friend first. I was her friend first. Kind of, kind of. <laughs> we kind of joke about this because, honestly, until we really started dating, we weren't fully close friends. Or I thought we were not. He thought we were. I thought we were <laughs> friends before we dated. Apparently, we weren't. I don't know. But thank you, Lord, for setting this up. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but, yeah, I would, you know, we were friends, you know, quote, unquote. And, um. I would see how she is. I would see how, you know, for those that don't know, she works in the church. Um, and, you know, she works closely with the pastors. She works closely with our leaders. And, you know, little by little, I would kind of see what they say about her, you know, um, what, what her leaders, what her pastors think about her. And, you know, they said some good things. Um, but we're going to get into more detail about why that's so important. Um, but, yeah, uh, and then one day, um, you know, I pulled her out of uh, a Sunday sermon. Um, you know, forgive me, Lord. But, um, you know, I called her to the lobby. I'm like, hey, like, can we talk? So, you know, we were walking, and um, uh, eventually I, I, I told her, like, hey, like, you know, I'm interested in you. Um, you know, I want to be um, friends with intentions, you know, to get to know each other and, and, and to potentially date each other. Um, and she said, no, no, okay. No, I didn't. <laughs> no, I just. Um, but yeah, it, it was very interesting because when I met Josh, we, like he said, we would serve a church together, you know, we, yeah, we would see each other on Sundays basically at church. But we were not really, like, texting all the time, calling. It wasn't really like that. Um, it was really all ministry-related until all of a sudden he just approached me and was very direct and just very straight up. And it's crazy because that's something that I had prayed about. I had just been like, Lord, I never want to pursue something. I don't want to ever, like, seek someone out or make something happen. Like, I just want to be doing my thing, like, serving you. Uh, living my life for you, and then if someone's interested, they can tell me. And that's literally what I told the Lord, and that's kind of what happened. Like, I mean, he just approached me and was so direct and was just like, hey, like, I'm interested in you. I want to get to know you better. Um, and, yeah, the first thing I asked him is if he had prayed about it. He had. And so my response was just that I, I wanted time to think about it and pray about it because I didn't really think of him like that at that point, you know. It's not like I had all these feelings for him. Um, but that's how it started. He just straight up approached me. Um, and then I eventually talked to my leaders about it. Um, I was just like, hey, like, Josh told me this. What do you think? And um, they just spoke very highly of him. And they were like, it's not a bad thing to get to know someone, you know. Do it the right way. And so we just started to get to know each other um, as friends in a friend group. We started texting. We started talking on the phone, <laughs> um, getting to know each other. And then now here we are. 13, more, 13 months later, we're dating. But, yeah, that's kind of how it happened. Praise God. Praise God. Isn't God good? <laughs> um, awesome. So let's do it. Um, so, of course, before we started dating, we were single. You know, spoiler alert. But <laughs> um, there's, um, how many believe that there's a purpose to singleness? You know, we want to talk about that with you guys. Um, so if you guys are writing notes, please write notes. Um, Media team, sorry, if you can go to the slide that says singleness so I could see the verses. Um, yeah, so we, we have a few categories because, you guys, dating is like a whole topic, okay? We can have so many series about it. So our, our hope is to, um, yeah, share what the Lord has shared with us. And so we have a few topics that we want to hit. Uh, but the first one is we want to talk about singleness. Before we even get to the finding someone part, we're single. And so we want to talk a little bit about that. Yeah. Um, if you guys have your Bibles or you guys can write this down, 
Um, it's in the book of Revelations chapter 2, verse 4. I'm going to stand for this one if that's okay. <clears throat> He's ready. <laughs> um, not too long ago, before we get into this verse, um, you know, I was talking to someone. I, I had lunch with, with a guy, and, you know, he was kind of telling me that he was interested in someone um, and he was just asking me, like, man, what are the steps? Like, what do I do? You know, how's, you know, uh, you know, my life is like this and like that. Am I ready? Um, and, and I thank God because the first verse that, that he brought to my mind was Revelation chapter 2, verse 4. Um, and it says, nevertheless, I have this against you that you have left your first love. And why did God bring... Um, this verse um, to my mind at that moment, um, I believe that it, it is so important that you have your first love first, and that is Jesus. Before any other person, before thinking about relationship with, you know, with, with a guy, with a girl, um, you, you first have to be in love with Jesus. You have to learn how to be in love with Jesus. You know, if I, if I was to ask you, you know, uh, how do you love the Lord? Like, is, is God your, your first love, you know? Um, and, and, and if I was to ask you, like, what do you think about the Lord? You know, would you talk to him, like, or talk about him like you're in love with him, you know? Um, and, and that's why, again, this verse is so important because we have to have our first love uh, with the Lord first. Amen. Um, why singleness is so important is because of identity. Amen. Someone say identity. Identity is who you are in Christ. Okay. Identity means being whole in God. We've heard that sometimes that in a relationship it's two halves coming together and then becoming whole together. But let me tell you that you first must be whole in God. You first must be full uh, in the Lord, right, before you get to be with someone, right? Because sometimes when we have emptiness inside of us, when there's something that we haven't dealt with yet in our lives and we bring that into a, another relationship, then we look for fulfillment uh, in that area from that other person rather than the Lord. Do, do you, are you guys understanding? Amen. Um, so, again, identity, okay. Uh, real quick, if you just want to write it down, because we have so much to get through. Um, Psalms 139, verse 13 to 16. It talks about how we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Amen. And it's so important uh, that we know that. Amen. First uh, Peter chapter 2, verse 9, it says that we are a chosen race. Right, we are a priesthood, right, for the Lord. Amen. Um, so something that um, I, uh, I read from this book, it's called Singleness um, Engaged, Mar um, what is it? Singleness, Dating, Engaged, and uh, Marriage. Um, I forgot the author, you can ask me after, but something that, was uh, noted in this book is how the Lord is our oxygen tank, right? Um, how the Lord is our oxygen tank. In other words, he is our source of life, right? Um, and one, was, one must be, uh, I'm sorry. So the Lord is our oxygen tank, right, our source of life. He's the one we must be with every morning and every night. Right? Without him, we have, no, uh, we have no life. We have no identity. Right? Without him, we have no, um, like we suffocate. Right? How many know that without oxygen, we suffocate? Right? So we need the Lord. Right? We need the Lord to, to continue to live. Um, and uh, so again, to talk to you guys about how we need the Lord and and sometimes we can't, we can't give, um, 
how, how do you say it? We can't give um, God-sized needs to people, right? We, got, we can't give God-sized needs to people. In other words, there is things that man cannot fulfill in your life, that a woman can't fulfill in your life, right, that only God can. Amen. We, we talked a little bit about it, right? He gives you identity, right? Um, and a specific verse that I want to talk to you guys about is in the book of Psalms chapter 23. How many know Psalms 23, right? They teach us in Sunday school. Our mothers pray that over us sometimes. Um, what's it say? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want, right? He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. But I want you guys to pay attention to verse 3, right? It, it says that he restores my soul. Verse 3, again, it says he restores my soul. In other words, only God can restore your soul, right? Only God can restore your feelings, right? Only God can restore your, your mind, your heart. Only God can give you peace, right? Do you, are you guys understanding? So... The scripture literally says that he restores my soul. Amen. Um, so write this down. It says, so when we don't have our source of life and we step into a relationship, then we look for life in that person. And we bring God-sized needs to human beings. Amen. Um, yeah. I don't know if you want to add on to that. Um. As we're talking about singleness, it's because obviously before we get to a relationship, that's what we are. We're single. And um, especially when we're young, you guys, like high school, young, young adult um, years, it's something that's definitely on our mind. And sometimes I think while we're always growing up, we always want to get to the next stage. Like, I can't wait till this. I want, can't wait till that. And it's great to dream. It's great to pray to the Lord and believe in the promises that he has for us. Obviously, we're talking about how marriage is designed by the Lord. However, every season that we're in is so important and it's so valuable. So being 12, being 13, 14, 15, like every single year that we experience is so important. And it's so valuable. And my advice to you guys would be whatever age you, you are, enjoy where you are especially when we're young and we have energy and we can run, like literally physically run and stay up late and wake up early and do all the things we need to do. These are the best years. Well, every year is the best year to give to the Lord. But when we're young, it's so worth it to give your young years to the Lord. This is the time when you're learning how to love the Lord, how to hear the voice of the Lord. You're learning who you are, not just as a person. You're not just learning what you like, what you don't like. This is my favorite color. This is the style that I like. This is the music that I'm into. But we're learning our identity in the Lord. We're discovering because he, we are who we are from the moment God designs us. But as we're growing up, we're discovering how God created us who he made us and these are this is the best time you guys when you're single to pursue the Lord with everything you have because let me tell you it's the most worth thing ever I am so so grateful that I I can say like I spend my young years learning about the Lord and knowing who he was wasting my desires on the Lord praying prayers that I'm seeing being fulfilled now but I prayed them when I was like 15 years old, 18 years old, um, there's nothing better than setting your mind on him. Like right now, we, when we're young, we really shouldn't be pursuing anything other than the Lord because like Josh is saying, he is our source of life. And if we wait until we're with someone or until we're 30, 40 to find our source of life, it's like, man, we live all of this years without that source. But having the time, you guys, like when we're young, we have so much time. We have so much freedom. Like you're, you're not working as hard because you don't have to provide for a whole family yet. You're not, um, yeah, you're studying. Please study. Spend your time doing that. But we just have so much more attention to give. And there's nothing better to give your attention to than the Lord. Um, more first and foremost. But when you're single is the time when you can build friends. Like make good friendships. Um, continue to dis discover like how the Lord created you. Um, 
because at the end of the day, when you do get to the point where you're like maybe ready to um, start looking for a relationship, we don't attract who we, we just don't attract who we want, but we attract who we are. And if we don't know who we are, we don't know what we're going to attract. We're not, we're not even going to know what we want in somebody else if we don't even know who we are first. And That's so yeah. I think I just went off a little bit on a ramble on um, just serving yeah. the Lord in your young years. But it's truly so important um, because it's not time wasted. Like no time spent on the Lord is wasted. And trust me, you guys, like there's no rush. There is no rush because... Once you start to get into a relationship with someone, it's not just you anymore. You're really combining your life with somebody else's. And so enjoy the time where you do have the freedom to serve the Lord how you want to serve him. And to allow the Lord to work in you how he wants to when you're single. Um, I think it's a really important time to just learn how to truly be fulfilled in the Lord. Because like Josh said, like no one else can ever fulfill you even as we're in a relationship now. And... I'm so grateful. We're going to talk about that too. And what a blessing it is. Like, um, I, I love this person. However, he cannot give me what only God can give me. Like, as much as it, um, as a blessing of it is to have someone to partner with you and to be there for you, at the end of the day, truly what fulfills my heart truly just comes from the Lord. And if we are not, we don't know how to find that yet, that's when we start to do things, the, what Josh was describing of expecting someone else to fulfill us and expecting someone else to make us happy when they can't. You know, they truly can't unless it's from the Lord. Yeah, that's so good. That's so good. Um, also, what I want to add on, um, I've heard it before from a pastor, you know, and Karen touched on it, how like, you know, when we're young, you know, especially in our teenage years, you know, we're, we have to dedicate it to the Lord. Um, and we should even be thinking about a relationship. One, because, you know, teenagers don't really have a job, right? They don't maybe have a car, maybe, you know, so they can't really offer anything to their partner, right? Say to, to even offer stability, even, you know, to, to drive them around, you know what I mean? Um, and I heard a pastor say it like this, you know, when, when a teenager or a young person has nothing to give, the only thing that they can give is their bodies, right? The only thing that they can give is their bodies. And that's so destructive, right? Because us as human beings, us as human beings we want to give, right? We want to give, we want to love. But if we can't love, right, with, with buying flowers for them, for drive, you know, going on dates, right, um, buying them things, right, then the only thing we can give is, right, bodies. Amen? Um, and just to give an example, I think this is something that Josh truly lived out before we met. If you want to share a little bit of your testimony or like just what your life looked like before we even dated. You know, yeah. you could tell them. Yeah. Um, As a guy. So, so again, I mean, before, um, before coming here, I lived in Temecula and, and my parents were pastors for 12 years. Um, and for those that don't know, you know, PKs, pastors, kids, they, they get involved in a lot. You know, they help, they help. Uh, Just like um, a lot of you guys here. Yeah. You know, we help. Uh, I'm going to stand for this. Sorry. Um, I got it. Um, you know, we, we help a lot with, um, me and my brother, we helped a lot with the church. And um, it wasn't until the age of 16 that I truly had a relationship with the Lord. Um, you know, I, I grew up uh, in the church. Um, you know, I knew of God, right? I would go to sun, I would go to Sunday service, uh, Sunday school. You know, my my entire life, but I never truly had a relationship with the Lord, right? Just how we we um, read in Revelation chapter two, verse four, right? Finding your first love. Um, so it wasn't until the age of sixteen. Um, you know, that I had my relationship with the Lord. And, and at the, also at the age of 16, my parents started putting me to preach on Sundays, you know, for, our, for a Sunday uh, service. And, I mean, I'm so grateful. It, it was so amazing. Um, and I was part of the worship team at the age of 12. Um, 
And uh, little by little, you know, as I was kind of like the church was my second home. Like I could literally like bring a pillow here and, and a blanket, you know, and, and the next day we have church service, right? And the day after we have church service. And, then, and the next day we have church service, you know. So, so again, you know, the church was my second home. Um, but, you know, I was involved in a lot, right? I, was, I started playing uh, drums at the age of, age of 11. Uh, my mom put me in classes of, of piano. So I was just involved in so much. Um, but I'm so grateful because that took my time, right? That, that, that took my time to learn. Um, and, I mean, as I'm saying this, I, I encourage you guys to, to find something, right, to learn a new skill, right? Find, find something to learn for the Lord, right, dedicated to him, right? I love the worship team here, I think. I mean, you guys are amazing. You guys are awesome. Um, this actually reminds me of my church in Temecula, so this is, this is great. Um, but I just love the worship team. I mean, you guys did amazing. And it just reminds me of, you know, when I was in my teenage years, you know, when all I knew was, was, was being, like, having an instrument um, in front of me um, and, and giving it to the Lord, right? So, um, yeah, that's kind of, I mean, my story and, um, you know, basically he was yeah. pretty busy. I was busy. Too busy to be dating. I was very busy. And my parents were strict. So thank, thank God for that too. Um, yeah, so. Yeah, I'll talk a little bit more about what my life looked like when I was single. But um, we just really kind of wanted to emphasize that singleness because it's so important. And sometimes, especially as young people, we are thinking about all the relationships and things like that. And we definitely, there is a time and a place for everything like the Bible says. Um, but truly not wasting those years, you guys. Like, it's such a gift. It's a gift to be single. It's a gift to just be who you are, honestly. Like, who the Lord created you to be. There's nothing more fun than that. And you continue to be that for the rest of your life. Just changes a little bit. And so, um, if you're young, you're single right now, enjoy it. If you're in a relationship, we're not telling you to go break up with your boyfriend, like we said. We're not God. We don't, we don't know everything. Um, we're just here to share from experience and what we've been learning um, as we grow together. And so um, we are going to get to talking about dating right now. I know that's what we're talking about. Um, so we want to introduce this term called courtship, which is like Anita and Misael said. And um, in the culture, in, like, in society, social media, we hear dating, the word dating all the time. So we're going to use that term uh, to talk about culture. But we really want to talk about what the Bible says, how God sees it. And if we're being fully honest, there's not really a lot of scriptures that talk about the dating period. It talks a lot about marriage and really a lot about living life as a Christian, as a follower of Jesus. Not a whole lot about the when you're getting to know someone and all of that. But there are biblical principles um, about living like the lifestyle of a Christian and about marriage and how to choose a spouse and values that we as women and men should have. And so we want to talk about those. And we're going to use the term courtship. That's kind of one that we've learned and we've been trying to walk in. And so um, they're two very different things though, dating and courtship. Um, one of the main things is, um, I wrote it down, so let me see, is that in culture, in dating, mainly, you know, and this is like our high school friends, come on you guys, not all of our friends know Jesus, we've all been there, you know, but when people talk about dating, a lot of the times, the goal of dating, it's just to have fun. It's to have a good dating life, you know, enjoy getting to know someone, but the goal can kind of be summed into fun. However, biblical terms, courtship, finding a person or getting to know someone, the goal of that is marriage. And that really changes things because us getting to know each other, the goal was not just to have a good time. The goal was not just like, oh, let me talk to this guy like he's interested. Let's just see how it goes. No, the goal, even at the very beginning, I might not know if I'm going to marry this person. That's not what we're saying. But the goal is to see if you can potentially marry someone. And we talked about how valuable marriage is to the Lord. And there's so much scripture about that because the Lord values covenant. He values that commitment that we make to him and then in turn to each other. And so that's really one of the main differences is that dating is about fun. However, courtship, finding someone is about marriage. That's the end goal. Um, 
of uh, why we even enter into a courtship relationship. And so um, the reason, one of the reasons why courtship is so important is because it has a purpose. There's a purpose. It's not just for funsies. And when you have a purpose, it just saves you a lot of time, you know. Um, it saves you a lot of feelings. You don't waste your feelings. You don't waste somebody's time. You don't waste your own time. Um, you don't get hurt necessarily because you're, there's a mutual agreement. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, we just want to talk about, before we get into, we're going to talk about some levels of courtship, of what, it, what the flow should be like. But we just want to share some differences between dating and courtship before we get there. Um, and one of them is um, that dating involves your friends a lot, right, and your feelings. It's like, oh, my gosh, I met this guy. He's so cute. I start dating him. And you talk about it with your friends. What do you think? Oh, my gosh, no, I don't like him for you. You know, all the things uh, that girls talk about, guys talk about. Uh, she seems cool. No, she doesn't seem cool. It involves a lot of your friends, like, and your feelings, how you feel, you how you think you feel about somebody, what their vibe is, you know, like they're cool, they're not cool. However, courtship actually involves your parents and your mentors and your leaders, which as a young person, you're like, ugh, I don't want to ask my mom about this girl that I like. Maybe, maybe you do have a relationship with your parents. I encourage it. But in courtship, that's something that's actually very valuable. It involves the people that love you, the people who care about you and want what's best for you. I think that's something both Josh and I really did is talk to, I mean, my sister's here, Marianne, raise your hand. She's the best. Uh, he has a really, he has a brother that he's really close to as well. And from the very beginning, I talked to my sister about it. I talked to my mom about it right away. Actually, the first person that I, well, I don't know the first person, but I went to my pastor right away. Like, hey, Josh approached me. He told me this. What do you think? And it was actually my pastor who was like, hey, I've told you no about a lot of guys before. But if I was going to give my yes to someone, it's him. And I, that really meant a lot to me. Um, <laughs> he's all happy. That really meant a lot to me because I trust my pastor. Um, I have a close friendship and relationship with him and his wife, Pastor Roxanne. And so for them to see that and tell me that, that gave me a lot of peace. Um, and so in courtship, that's something that's very important. It's that it involves the people who care about you. And the reason why that's important is because the more advice you get, the more um, support you get from the people who care about you, the less hurt you'll be because if something goes wrong, they're going to be there for you. And they're even going to warn you. You know, they're going to see things beyond your feelings. So it sounds scary to be like, tell your pastor or your leader um, or your mentor or your parents about someone that you like. Um, and it can be scary because it's a vulnerable thing to say like, hey, like I'm thinking about this. However, it's so worth it because it invites um, godly counsel, counsel into your life. People that are not just going to tell you what you want to hear, but people who are going to tell you uh, and encourage you in a godly way from what the Lord says, what the Bible says. And people who are going to pray for you. Oh, my gosh, it takes so much prayer to be in a courtship. And um, so that's one of the differences is in dating. Sometimes you kind of keep it to yourselves. It's very casual, like among your friends. Maybe you'll start telling your family. Um, however, you're not really asking them for um, or inviting them to speak into your life. Um, do you want to tell them the next one? Yeah. Difference um, between the two. Courtship involves sacrifice. It involves serving and involves commitment. Um, and just as Karen was sharing, you know, dating, um, culture sees dating as having fun, you know, like, you know, giving, um, you know, a little bit of me and then not, you know, kind of just being undecisive right, with, with what you want and, and what you're looking for in the relationship. Um, but courtship is, is, is clear, right? Courtship is intentional. Um, and courtship, again, you know, sacrifice, serving, and commitment. And sometimes going back to singleness, we have to learn these things uh, in singleness before we can even give that to someone else, right? Um, and, uh, yeah. If you want to go to the next one. Um, and one of the, why that's different is because a lot of times when we think about dating someone or being with someone, we think like, what, what do I think I like? Like, what can I get out of it, kind of, you know? You think it's like, how, how's this person going to make me feel? What are they going to give to me? 
Uh, do they check my boxes, right? Like, do they dress the way that I like, the style that I like? Do they do something cool that I like? But when you're in a courtship, you're considering the other person, and we're going to talk about that too. But when you're agreeing to be in a serious relationship, you're actually not necessarily thinking about yourself. The Bible said, husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church. How did Christ love the church? Selflessly, in humility. And so when you're in, entering into a relationship, you're signing up to love someone. Not like the cutesy way. Yeah, the cutesy way is there, the romance, you know. But you're signing up to truly love someone, to put their needs before yours. And so that's a very different perspective from dating and courtship. Um, and another thing is um, courtship, it sounds like such an old word, you guys, but I don't know what other word to use, um, is that it's a real thing. It's not an escape or a fun distraction. You know, dating can sometimes feel like, you know, the fantasy of everything we see in the movies and like, oh, a guy's going to pick me up and like you start to daydream. And like I said, dreaming is great. Um, but courtship is, it's something that's real because the Bible says, you guys, life is hard. I'm sure if I asked here right now who has been through something hard, we can all raise our hands. And um, courtship is something that's real. It's something where you're truly getting to know someone um, that's going to be there for you in the good times and the bad times. Um, and so it's not just some fantasy world, but it even gets hard. It's hard to have a relationship with someone, just like it's hard to have a relationship with your parents and with your siblings and with your friends. A romantic relationship is also hard. It takes a lot of work and commitment. Um, and so it's not just a fun distraction. And I think the verse that we put here is 2 Timothy 2, 3, and 4. Paul says, join me in suffering like a good soldier of Christ. No one serving as a soldier gets entangled in civilian affair affairs, but rather tries to please his commanding officer. Um, and this is something that we live out is joining in God's suffering even as we're in a relationship with someone. I think this is just emphasizing how it can be hard. Um, and so it's not just for funsies is what we're trying to say. It's so worth it. Like there's so much blessing that comes with it and we'll talk about that too. Um, but we have a little picture of, um, not on actual picture, but um, of courtship and just like levels. So we, we wrote out four levels um, of kind of like the flow of a courtship. So, you want to do level number one? Yeah, number one, um, for what courtship looks like, uh, it, level one, it's spiritual. Okay. Wait, sorry, before you start. Yeah. And what we mean about what courtship looks like, this is, we're trying to give you a picture of like, okay, we know dating and how the world paints a picture and how they talk about it. Uh, we want to paint a picture of what it could look like doing it God's way um, to the best of our abilities. Um, and kind of what that process would look like. So if you were to ask me, okay, so how do we really do it? This is kind of the picture that we want to give to you guys. Yeah. So again, level one is spiritual. Um, uh, spiritual values, convictions, uh, vision, uh, faith, right? It's to connect on talking about God, sharing your faith with one another. And I even feel like sometimes this is part of the evaluation phase. Right? I would hope that you guys would know all of this about the other person before you step into a relationship with them. Right? You have to know their convictions. Right? You have to know, um, you know their faith, what they believe in, uh, who they believe in. Right? Um, their values. Right? Do they value family? Right? Do they value treating their family right? You know, is the, is the man a gentleman to, to his mom? Right? Is... Um, you know, is she uh, respectful to, to her parents, right, to her family? Um, so these are things that we have to see uh, or try to see in that person in the evaluation phase, right? And that may, that may take some time, right? That takes, you know, you won't see them every day, but in, in the times that you do get to see them, right, uh, uh, find out these things. Again, what do their uh, leaders, their pastors, their mentors say about them? in these things um so yeah even just connecting in this and knowing this about each other in the beginning of your courtship yeah so level one when you do let's say you want to enter into a courtship with someone it's connecting with them on a god level like having god conversations like connecting on that first and it doesn't mean like i'm not gonna say that but 
Um, just connecting on that level, like before anything, truly, like what are your values? What does your faith look like? Your work, walk with the Lord. But level two um, is social. So getting to know each other's personality, getting to know each other's character, hanging out with friends, going out and doing like fun things um, before you even get to anything cutesy or whatever. But truly like getting to know who they are as a person, um, activities, sharing hobbies, um, that's pretty much it. Like getting to know even like um, how do they relate to their family, but just really on a social level. Um, seeing like do we even get along type of thing you know just like truly their personality before even really going on a date or hanging out but like sharing actual activities together um to get to know who this person is beyond because you're like well maybe this person really loves the lord but wow we don't really have much else to talk about you know like we can't share a laugh together or things like that because that's also really important i mean you're finding a friend you're finding someone that you can do life with right like for the rest of your life so you kind of have to have a little bit of fun with them. Um, yeah, you got to laugh at their jokes, right? Are they funny? Right? You laugh at my jokes, right? No. Sometimes. Sometimes. I'm, <laughs> I'm trying that. Um, but, yeah, I mean, that's so good. Uh, level three is emotional. Um, so in level three, you start to share feelings, right? You grow in emotional affection. Um, almost, this is kind of almost to the engagement uh, phase, Um when you guys have the, um, say, the the conversation, you know, do we want to take this further? And are we looking to, you know, one day be married? Okay, you know, what does that look like? Right? So that's kind of this conversation, right? Uh, the emotional aspect, the engagement uh, aspect. Um, right here, it says when you really develop feelings. Um, and also, you are both in an agreement to what the next steps look like. Yeah, so after you get to know them, like, spiritual level, social level, it's like, oh, now you really have feelings for this person. And you actually start, now you start to share them with each other. That's the, yeah, you share your feelings with each other. Um, and then level four is, really doesn't really happen until marriage when it's the physical part where now you get to share your bodies with each other because now you're married. Um but up until that point, all you've really shared is your faith with the Lord, your, your walk with Jesus. Um, you as a person, you get to enjoy each other's personalities, each other's characters, each other's families and friends. You start to share your feelings for one another. And then you really make that decision of like, yes, I want to do this with you. And then is the step where you actually, um, the physical comes into aspect, you know, more high fives and uh, hugs and stuff. <laughs> Um, no, but truly, like that, until marriage, that's when that really happens. But that's when you, at this point, you already really know everything else about the person. And you're ready to give yourselves and they're ready to give themselves to you. And that's why it's so beautiful because it's, now you're committed. Now you have the chance to do that. And if you really think about it, in the dating world, the world, it does it backwards, right? First is the physical. Oh, my gosh, they're so cute. Let me go and kiss them, Right. Then it's the, um, I like you so much, she likes me too. You start sharing your feelings first, and then you're like, oh, you like that? Oh, you're like that? Oh, you're not funny? Or, you know, it, it's, it's way backwards. And then God comes at the very end, you know? But the way that the Bible talks about it, what does the Bible say? It's God first, always. And so even in our um, getting to know someone that we may be interested in, that still comes first. Because that's always going to be first in our own hearts. God is our priority. And so we have to make sure that that's a priority in their lives too. Before we even get anywhere. Um, so again, those are like the first uh, or the four levels of courtship. Um, and what that could look like. Um, and even the Bible talks about like don't be unequally yoked. Right? How many have heard that verse before? Um, and again, it's so true what Karen was saying. Like sometimes the world has this backwards. Right? First it's physical emotional, right, then maybe you share some activities. And by the time you know it, you know, like, you're just learning that this person is an atheist or you're just learning that this person is, you know, like just has a different religion, a different faith and a different belief than you, right, when in reality, right, again, the Bible says don't be unequally yoked. So you have to find out is this person, you know, uh, also, you know, believe in God, right, um, is this person in love with Jesus? Um, because at the end of the day, 
you're trying to find someone that you can do life with, right? You're trying to find someone that you're going in the same direction with, right? And that's towards the Lord together. Amen. Yeah. So we're going to get into some practicals, uh, like maybe some tips on like what to look for in someone eventually um, and practicals for where you are right now. But you guys, the reason why we're talking about this one again, it's on all of our minds to be dating. Um, and before growing up, I would hear like, there's this one perfect person for you, you know, like sometimes we hear that too, like one person that God designed for you. Um, and God definitely designed someone for you that he definitely has a plan for you. I don't know if that there's only one person in the world that can match that description, you know. Um, but we're talking about this because you will only do it once if we do it the Lord's way. You only get married once. And which is why it's so important. I mean, can you imagine, you guys, like what an important decision that is? My mom always told us after receiving Christ as your Lord and Savior, choosing who you marry is the most important decision of your life. Why? Because it's such a commitment and you're not, when you commit before the Lord, you're not turning back. And you truly only get to do it one time. Um, and so which is why this is so important and why we shouldn't be kind of like wasting our time. Uh, with people that are not going to end up being that person, you know. And at the end of the day, um, sometimes when we pursue these things for fun, it's a temporary fun. But then at, at, at the end of the day, it ends, right. Like eventually it has an end if it's not in the Lord. Um, but when we do it with the Lord, everything that the Lord designs is so good, you guys. It's so intentional. Yes, it's hard. I mean, guys, waiting for that is not easy. It's, it's definitely not easy. Um, but it's so worth it. It's so, so worth it. And so um, we wrote out some things about what to potentially look for in someone. Amen. Um, so we, we've kind of touched on it, but we'll just go through the list. Um, so what to look for in someone. Um, you have to find someone where you are both going in the same direction, right? Values, principles, faith, right? Convictions. Um, you know, do you guys have one truth, right, and that's Jesus. Um, do you guys have the same, you know, vision and the same direction that you guys are trying to go, right? I kind of knew that, you know, I, again, I grew up in the church, um, so all I ever knew was church, right, and, and I just fell in love with it. I loved serving the Lord, doing ministry. So me, before we stepped into a relationship, I was thinking, like, man, like, the person that I want to be with I would hope has also grown up in the church and loves the Lord and, and, and is involved, heavily involved in the church, right? And just as, you know, I prayed for that and, and spoke that, you know, um, you know, thank the Lord for, for Karen, you know, for her, um, for the Lord, you know, bringing us together. Um, but also um, it says here, someone who you can do life with, right, a true friend. Uh, they will be there in the good times and in the bad times, right? It's not all about how attractive they are, right? Um, That's important, guys. Yeah. That's very important. It's, it, I think it's important to be attracted to someone. However, it's not the main thing, you know? I think what truly attracts you to someone, one is like their spirit, but also just who they really are on the inside because looks are going to change. The Bible even says that, like beauty fades. Um, oh, I don't know the end. But I know that it says that because it says it's talking about what's truly important. It's what, yeah. who we are inside, who the Lord created us to be. And so looks are not all that. Yeah. Um, a quick story. Um, one time we had a, a creative meeting um, at our church, at our, one of our pastor's backyards. Um, we had like a little meeting. Um, and it was just all of the creative people, those that worked with uh, production, social media, um, and and uh, there's quite a few people there. I'd say maybe like 15 to 20 people. And I arrived late, um, but I was there. Um, I was with family, so you know I, I had to arrive late. But anyways, um, our pastor was asking every single person there, you know, how, how do you see yourself in five years, right? Um, and this is something that he, he told everyone, right? But he told them in the beginning I wasn't even there. So when I arrived, he asked me, you know, he, he called me on the spot. He said, hey, Josh, I asked everyone this, you know, uh, 
where, where do you want to be in five years? And I said, um, you know, wherever the Lord takes me, right? Where, you know, wherever the Lord leads me. Uh, <laughs> and Pastor, um, for those, our friends that are here, it was, it was Pastor Max. And, um, and he was like, when I, when I said that, he was like, okay, Karen. And I'm like, I mean, what the heck? So this was before, obviously, we were dating. Um, but she had the same answer, too. So we're like, like the only two. I had two. answered that, the same thing. Literally, we said it almost the same way. But um, he said it when he got there way later. Yeah. And he didn't know. But it was just so funny that he remembered that because that was mm -hmm. such a long time ago. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Way before we, yeah. Dated. But even there, you know, we're, we're connected in some way, you know. Praise God. Um, <laughs> so... Also, um, again, what I've told you guys, don't be unequally yoked. Um, this will only lead to your relationship with God being hindered or lead to compromise. Um, me growing up in the church, I've seen marriages that have been unequally yoked, right? I've seen uh, the wives coming to church, you know, for our Monday prayer, our Sunday service, while the husband is, is, is home, right? Just, you know, not, not doing anything with the Lord. And, you know, through growing up and seeing that through other couples, um, I've seen the, the, the difficulty, right, and even coming to church, right? Sometimes they can, sometimes they can't even come to church. Um, so, it, again, it's so important. Like, the Bible is so clear, and, and, and thank God for his word, right, that he instructs us, you know, to not be unequally yoked with our potential someone. Yeah, I'm glad you said that because it reminded me. Um so again, as you're thinking about potentially looking for someone, we hear that a lot. Don't be unequally yoked with someone. Do you guys know what that means? Raise your hand if you don't know what that means, and that's okay. Thank you for being honest. Yeah, just a few of you. We'll, we'll explain it for all of us. You know, it's a good reminder. Um, a yoke was something that back then in the Bible, old times, they used to connect two oxen. So it was like a bar piece of wood that would connect them. So they would walk together. Um, huh? On their necks. So it would connect them by their necks. And they would have to work the field together in pairs. But obviously if you're unequally yoked, if one is like going further than the other, that's going to create some, um, what do you call that? Some, not traction. That's going to create tension, some tension. Separation, yeah. Anyways, it's not, they're not going to work their best, right? Because one's going further or slower than the other. So that's just a picture of not being unequally yoked. And what the Bible is referring to is in your spiritual life. Don't. Be in a relationship with someone who doesn't know Jesus and you're in love with Jesus, right? That's like unequal following the Lord. Uh, and it's beyond just believing in Jesus. Two people can believe in Jesus, but one could be madly running after Jesus with all of their hearts and lives and giving everything for him. And the other person's just like, well, I believe in him. He's cool. And he's going to live life the way they want. When you're trying to make a decision together, it's going to be really hard to be on the same page. You know, even... I could give an example, but that's really what it means. And um, you guys, that's so important because if you do enter into a relationship with someone that doesn't follow Jesus the way you do, it's either going to, one, it's going to hinder your own relationship with Jesus. It's going to make it really hard for you to want to go to church when they don't want to go to church, um, to want to serve the Lord when they don't want to serve the Lord. So it's going to hinder your relationship or it's going to cause you to compromise your relationship with Jesus because you're going to end up siding with them. Like if they don't want to do it, well, I'm not going to do it because they don't want to do it. And now you're compromising your own faith, something the Lord might be telling you to do. You might not be doing it because that boyfriend or girlfriend that you're with, they're not into it. And so you're not going to want to talk about Jesus. You're not going to want to pray to the Lord even in your meal times, or, you know, those are just examples. But that's why it's so important to listen to that verse. And um, sorry, one more thing. In the Bible, um, how, you, how many of you guys know the King Solomon? King Solomon, he wrote a lot of books in the Bible. Um, but he was said to be the wisest man, the richest man. He was so blessed by the Lord. Um, he had many wives. But the Lord had told the people, the people of Israel at the time not to marry someone outside of their people, right? That was like a rule that God had given them. And it really blew my mind because one day I understood why. And it's because when they married someone outside of their culture, outside of their people, they ended up following other gods that wasn't the one true God. It's because they were deterred from following 
the one God that they knew and they were in love with, somehow they got twisted into following and praising other gods. Why? Because they entered into relationships with people who followed those gods. And sometimes even for us in nowadays, you know, it could look like I'm so mildly in love with Jesus, but I start dating this guy and he's super into drugs or certain movies or something. And then now becomes my God, you know, I'm not following Jesus. I'm not allowing Jesus to bring me peace. I'm finding peace in the drugs that my boyfriend's giving me. Does that make sense? Um, it just really comes. So when the Lord says that, it's not as a, because it's like such like a, not to be a bummer, you know, not to give you like a bad rule. It's because he wants to protect our relationship with God. Everything that God tells us is because he wants to protect our hearts. Um, because that's what he desires the most. He's so jealous for our hearts. He wants all of our attention. He wants all of our love. And so when he tells us to do something or not to do something, it's not to be some annoying, like, God that's telling us what to do. No, he's giving us advice on how to stay in that love that we love so much that comes from him. That's so good. Isn't she amazing? Um, <clears throat> how much time do we have, by the way? We're almost done. Before, we want to do a Q&A, yes. um, but we want to leave enough time for that. You said that I can have two hours, you said? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, no, real quickly, um, before we get to the practical steps and we're about to close, um, something I want to share and something that Karen started touching on, um, and I'm going to stand for this. <laughs> um, I think I know what it is. It's pretty good. So King Solomon, um, we see that. You know, he he departed from the Lord, right, because he introduced um, wives, right, that were from a different culture that worshiped different gods, right? So we see Solomon, even the wisest man, right, yet if you guys don't know, um, the Bible tells us to flee from sexual temptation, right? If you guys don't know, the Bible says flee from sexual temptation. You know what flee means? It means run for your life. You know, run for your life. Um, and it's so, so important why that is so, like, why we understand that is so true. Again, King Solomon, the wisest man literally in the whole world, yet he still fell through sexual temptation, through, right, uh, introducing, introducing uh, you know, different wives right, into his life. King Solomon, right? How many know who, who, uh, who Samsung is, right? Strongest man in the world, right? Yet he also fell because of a woman, right? He also fell because of sexual uh, uh, temptation, right? He didn't run away. He didn't flee, right? How many know who King David is? What, uh, what was King David known for? Well, what about his heart? Yeah, a heart after God, right? But even he, did he fall? He fell from sexual temptation. So even though you can be the wisest person, you can be the strongest person, or you can even have a heart after God, but yet the Bible is so clear to flee from sexual temptation. Oh, I, w I wish I heard an amen there. <laughs> but it's so true what the Bible says to run away. Any, even anything that is not from the Lord, right? Don't get in a fight with it, but run away for, for your life, for your salvation. Amen. All right. So as we close, before we do Q&A or pray, whichever way you guys want to do it, um, we're going to probably repeat ourselves a little bit, but these are just like the last nuggets we want to leave you with. Um, so for wherever you are right now, um, just some practical things that you can be focusing on. And we want to encourage you as well at the end. But step, practical step number one. Yeah, number one, um, make friendships, right? Make friends. Uh, surround yourself with a community, okay? Don't hide under a rock, Thinking that the Lord is going to bring, you know, a woman or a man at your, door, at your doorstep and be like, here you go. This is your person, you know. 
right? We, we have to make friendships, right? We have to be in a community, go to church events, right? Um, be in an environment where, you know, you want your person to be in, right? Yeah, guys, if you're single, have fun, man. Like, go to all the theme parks, take trips, read a book, watch movies, uh, have so much fun. Read like, some books. make friends, <laughs> read some books, spend time with your family. Like, again, this is where you have the freedom to just enjoy, um, serve the Lord, you know, come to church and paint, sweep, come serve on the worship team, learn an instrument, whatever it is. If you're single, um, enjoy friendships. Enjoy friendship with the Lord. Enjoy friendship with people. Um, it's so worth it. It's so much fun. But number two is the evaluation that Josh was talking about. Just That's just a practical thing. If you are thinking about someone at some point, just remember um, to first ask your question. Uh, first pray about it. Definitely pray. Um, ask the Lord. Surrender it to the Lord more than anything because we don't want what we want. We, got, we want what God wants for us. So in the evaluation process, pray. Watch how they treat their family, what their values are. Are they generous? Are they kind? Are they very rude to people they don't know? Are they rude to the waiter? You know, like just really, um, do they serve God? You know, like do they not only say they follow Jesus, but do they serve the Lord? Are they committed um, to his people? Because if we love God, we will love his people. Um, what are, again, again, what are their values? You know, are they responsible? Um, do they value generosity? Do they value um the presence of the Holy Spirit, you know, what are their values, etc. cetera. <clears throat> Number three, um, what does your leadership or your pastor say? So this is something that we've said, um, you know, when you think you are ready or, or when you're ready to approach someone, right, go to your leaders first, right? Do, you know, do they say that you are ready, right? Do they say that they are ready, right? Like, because you can... You know, you can be ready financially, spiritually, and all that. But maybe the person that you want to pursue is not there yet. Maybe they're dealing with something or they had to go through. You know, they're still going through something. Um, quick story. Uh, my mom and my dad, uh, before they met, um, they met at a wedding. Um, and they went to different churches. But something that my dad did before, that, before he went to my mom... Um, was that he went to her leaders, he went to her pastor and said, hey, I'm interested in, 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 in Gloria, you know. And, um, and uh, you know, they, they told him, you know, if she is ready, right. Um, so I think, I just think that is so important, right. Accountability, your leaders, right, that are there to look after you. And then number, another thing that um, practical step for where you are right now is to pray. You guys, I know we pray a lot, but that's that's what our life is. Um, but pray for the person that you will have. Pray um, that you're the person, that you become the person that God wants you to become. Um, but also um, surrender to the Lord. If you do have that desire, we all have that desire. In prayer, surrender that to the Lord and put your hope in him. Guys, he hears our prayers. He really does. I was reminded of that tonight as we were in worship, that he hears um, when we speak to him, when we're so vulnerable and we say, Jesus, this is, or like, Father, like, this is what I'm feeling. This is what I desire one day. He's so kind, you guys, and he hears our prayers. He knows our desires more than anybody else, and he cares about them. He doesn't just know them. He cares about them. So pray about it. Tell him about it. Don't try to do it on your own timing. If it's not the right time right now, if you're still young, that's Okay. Um, but wait on the Lord. Wait for his timing because he truly knows what's best. And waiting doesn't mean you're just going to sit around and be sad until it happens. No, wait expectantly. Wait having fun with what we just said. Like spend your time serving the Lord. Um, and trust trust in him. Trust in him. When you don't see it happening, when you don't see it going your way or you don't want to do something that you want or you want to do something. Um, and it, you know it's not the time. Just trust him. Um. Uh, number five, right? Yeah. Uh, work on yourself, right? Mature, right? Learn what forgiveness is. Learn what um, what even unforgiveness is, right? And 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 see the dangers in that, right? Learn what bitterness is. Learn what mercy, what serving other people looks like, right? So mature spiritually, mature emotionally, financially, 
um, convictions, right? Have your convictions. Know what the Word of God says, right? If you don't know what, what the Word of God says, then how can, you, how can you do relationship with someone, right? How can you do it the right way? So, again, develop your convictions. Uh, relationship with the Lord, right? Your first love. Everything that you do, either in relationship or anything in life, has to come from first the Lord. Has to come from your first love. Amen. Um, pursue God's heart and be devoted to him. Okay. Allow God to work even in you, even while you wait. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 3 and 4, it says, It is God's will that you should be sanctified. Say sanctified. That you should avoid sexual immorality. That each of you should learn to control your own body in a way that is holy and honorable. Romans chapter 13, verse 14 says, Rather clothe yourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ and do not think about how to gratify the desires of the flesh. Um, yeah, if you want to add on to that. Yeah, last verse and last thing we'll leave you with is um, a scripture that is in Songs of Solomon 8, 4. Um, it says, I adjure you, O daughters of Jerusalem, that you do not stir up or awaken love until it pleases. Um, the book of Songs of Solomon talks about the love between a man and a woman. But it has this verse that says, don't awaken that love until it pleases. Don't awaken that love until it's time. If you don't awake that part of yourself, if you don't entertain it, um, it's not really going to be so active in your life. And so, and you don't really need to awaken it until it's time. And so that's truly, as we wait, something that's really important. But we just want to um, share with you guys, waiting is not always easy. Um, and we don't do the things the world, the way the world does them. You know, we don't. We don't follow with TikTok what the Netflix shows um, show us with all the cute movies or all the cool guy movies uh, that talk about rel show relationships too. Um, they're fun to watch, you know, we, we, we're around it, but we're not of that world. Um, and we don't do things the way the world does them. We, do, we want to do them the way God designed them. And that's not always easy. Again, our battle is not against flesh and blood. It's a spiritual battle and we're, we're in a battle daily as we live life for the Lord. But it's so worth it, you guys, because our prize, um, our reward is always the Lord. And so if you're a young person right now, um, maybe you're not even thinking about dating, but maybe you are. We just want to encourage you. This is something that will eventually come. But we just encourage you to just seek the Lord. I mean, in simplicity, seek the Lord, read his word. He tells us what to do right there. Um, we don't have to go anywhere else. Uh, build good relationships with your leaders. Anita and Misael are so amazing. Um, build good relationships with each other. Be honest with each other. It's okay to be vulnerable. No one's going to shame you um, if they're your friend. Um, and, yeah, if you guys have any questions, we would love to answer them. I don't know if we have time. But we would definitely love to pray. Um, what would you guys like to do? Um, or maybe... Do you guys, are, is there anyone here though, like after everything that we shared, do you guys just have a question that maybe is burning on your heart or that you had before? Yeah. Glory to Dios. Okay. All right. So uh, I have a question for, for you, Josh. So for you, it seems like you were the one who took the first steps to pursue a relationship. And that's what uh, made you go to uh, Karen's leaders and ask them if, uh, you know, ask them about her. So my question is, uh, what made you feel like, because we just talked about um, how we should make our first love God. God should be the center of, of our identity always. So when you... Before you went into a relationship with Karen, did you feel like you had made God your identity, that you had made God um, the center of your heart and, and the most important thing in your life? And if, when, and if you did, uh, how did you know that? What were things that we can take away from it to see if we are at that point or coming close to that point? Yeah, no, that's a good question. Thank you for asking. Um, yeah, 
in terms of identity, I mean, there's so many things that, um, that the word of God says. There's so many things that the word of God says about us and who we are and how he made us. Um, and in terms of identity, you can't really know who you are until you're with the person that tells you who you are. In other words, um, you can't have an identity without having a relationship with the Lord, right? And it's so important that, um, that you do have a relationship with the Lord because in that you do find your identity. You do find that you are fearfully and wonderfully made, right? You identify that you are, the, you are a son of the living God, that you have authority here on earth, that you, um, you know, and, and so many other things, right? But, yeah, it was um, until, again, until I had, uh, when I started my relationship with the Lord truly at the age of 16, you know, um, again, before that, you know, I, I would just go to church. I would just fill up a seat. Um, you know, my parents were pastoring at the time, so, you know, they were doing their thing. I was just chilling, right, until the Lord one time messed me up and wrecked me and, and, and spoke to me. Um, and, um, and that's when I started truly to develop a relationship with the Lord. Um, but something also about identity is that the Lord wants us to be a reflection of who Jesus is, right? The Lord wants us to be like Jesus, right? How Jesus walked this earth, right? So um, also to say that the person that you spend the most time with is the person that you're going to become, right? So when you're with Jesus and when you spend time with Jesus, right, you start to uh, look like him, right? You start to uh, find that identity in him, right? Um, so yeah, uh, very good question. And, and yeah, I, I did have, I did know who I was and and my identity in the Lord before I pursued Karen. Um, just to follow up his question, though, I think he was also asking, how did you know that you knew that, though? Like, how, how were you sure that you already knew your identity? How would they know if they know that? If that makes sense. How do you know that, that you have your identity? Well, I mean, I think it's, it's just truly knowing, you know, who the Lord says who you are, right? Um, when, when you're with a group of people, um, right, in school, um, are you, are you um, triggered or are you easily influenced by the people around you, right? Or do you step away from that because you know who God has called you to be, because you know that you're not supposed to be around those influences, right? So in our identity, we, we make actions, right, from our identity, right? Um, if the Lord has called us to flee from sexual immorality, right, do, are we easily um, tempted in that or do we flee, right? That's also in knowing and having that identity. You know what I mean? Does that answer your question? Yeah. Yeah, so it's your actions, right? It's your actions and, and from your identity, right? Yeah.